Ladies and gentlemen, after spending an actual weekend in person and doing some toy hunts, we, uh, Jay, me and you, uh, hung out last weekend and we went to Dave's. We saw a lot of overpriced Safubi. Um, <laughs> Mispriced. A, some of it, it was wasn't even priced. Weekend. Some of yeah? it wasn't even priced. Yeah. We, we, uh, taught. Uh, the, uh, the the workers of Dave's what Safubi is and yeah and told them what the prices should be. Uh, it was a fun <laughs> Jay. It was a fun weekend. I'm glad you were able to come down, dude. Oh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun to go off island uh, and head over to beautiful uh, Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia, and uh, and the oh, surrounding beautiful. suburbs. <laughs> well, you know, it was super fun hanging out with the crew. Yep. Uh, and doing a lot of toy shopping and, and toy hunting, I guess is probably a better term. Uh, and just sitting around and chatting and, uh, you know, just just having a good, grand, wonderful old time. And it was it was an amazing thing. Thank you for hosting. Thank you, you and Craig and Abby and Hal and everybody that showed up. The whole team. Yeah. Super fun. It was a good time. Um, we yeah. got to do it more often. But we yeah. are we do have a show to run. So <laughs> we are yeah. back. And uh, and just like a little programming note for anybody watching, we are going to do we're going to start doing this a little differently. Um, when this when this episode is done, it will go up on the audio feed like normal, like it usually does. Mm -hmm. But we are going to be kind of uh, splitting the video up into shorter videos for the YouTube. So mm -hmm. if you're watching this on YouTube and it's only, and you're watching this right now and you're like, why is this only 15 minutes or something like that? <laughs> it's because we're going to just, it's all getting posted, but it's getting split up. So whatever it's dumb, like programming note, it's going to be there. So don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Instead of the big Kaiju sized bite you had to take before now, it's just like a little, I don't know, like yeah. a little sage in size, maybe a yokai, YouTube. something else smaller. Yeah, YouTube's weird. The algorithm is weird, and we're just trying to fucking keep up with it. So whatever. <laughs> um, we'll do our best. <laughs> we'll do our best. Uh, Jay, do we got any news this week, or what do you, what do you, what are we jumping into? You know, you know, Jake. We there's uh, not much, right? There's not a ton. There's not a ton. And I, I was trying to catch up. I was actually uh, before we get into the news. One thing I was actually as representative the ambassador of Toku Toy Town. I was actually at a toy show this weekend so mm -hmm. i missed a lot of the news because you know when you when you work at a toy show as opposed to going to one well sometimes when you go to one if you're out there a long time spending a lot of money maybe but i just was like had no access no moment to spare to look up all the cool stuff coming out so when i on sunday night or monday morning i looked at all the news and i was shocked there wasn't a ton yeah, but we have a little bit, but but real quick, just to tell you, because I know we haven't had a chance to chat. The toy show was great. It was uh, the retro expo for those that live kind of in the Dallas Fort Worth area, or you really even just kind of in, in Texas. It's worth a trip up. Uh, their next shows in September. They're a big operation. It was cool. They had Don Bluth, uh, you know, one of the the great animators of our time. Sid Croft, mm -hmm. yes, ninety three year old Sid Croft, HR puffing stuff himself. Uh, was there. I know they had, it was really cool. They had um, E.G. Daly of, of Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Rugrats. John O'Hurley was there. I saw him actually perform in the musical Chicago in the city of Chicago and, but you know, Seinfeld and Whoa. SpongeBob. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he played, I forgot whatever the, the Richard Gere character is, but um, anyway, um, who else was there? Uh, I have actually a story uh, involving one of the, the rhythm section of the Go-Go's and we'll talk about it in a second the rock and roll hall of famers. And it was just a really cool, like a really cool group of, uh, Oh, duh. Tom Wilson, uh, Biff from back to the future was there. Yeah. And that dude's gigantic. He would like whoop my ass still. Like he I'm would. like, I'm not I mean, with well, yeah, yeah, he's a bully. Yeah, he would. So. I know he's a bully, but <laughs> it was a fun time. Uh, always good to catch up with all the other vendors that I've, I've come to know and kind of like, I don't know, kind of become friends with. I, I get always, I say, I almost said stuck, but I get placed next to like mm -hmm. the same few people every time. And I love it. They're great. Um, and it was super fun. And thank you to all the folks that came out and said hi and chatted. And we know, Hey, the cool thing is Jake is we have listeners in the area and they come out and they chatted about why just on monster Island. Yeah. So the Chazes and the Ryans actually there's, there's three Ryans of Chaz and all the Ryans. <laughs> uh, thank you guys coming out and chatting and, uh, and thanks again. Um, but the cool thing is, and this was totally like caught me off guard. I'm there on Saturday, which is the first night. And we're winding down. It's near six o'clock. And a guy comes up and he goes, uh, are you familiar with the Go-Go's? And, and I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. And I started singing, you know, either We Got the Beat or uh, or Vacation. I don't remember. Hot, you yeah. know, Head Over Heels. One of the great Go-Go's songs. 
And he goes, well, I'm an agent and I represent uh, Gina Shock and, and Kathy Valentine. And Gina Shock is a, the drummer of the go is a huge Godzilla fan. And she wants to come over and check out your booth. Would you be interested in maybe doing a trade for like a photo op and uh, an autograph for an item? Like, uh, yeah, that would be amazing. I'm posting all that crap on Instagram too. Like, yeah. hey, my, my first celebrity influencer. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so she comes over like five minutes later the nicest lady in the world was just like talking about how she would shop and buy Godzilla toys in the early eighties when she was on tour in Japan. Um, oh, wow. and that she was like, and just going through the stuff and asking all these questions. And she was just like, still like rocking and rolling. But and I did say, Hey, like you are the first rock and roll hall of famer that I'm aware of that has visited <laughs> Tokyo toy town. Yeah. Um, but she's like, Hey, do you have any, do you have any, King Gita and I was like, uh, yes, I do. So I was showing her all the Ghidorah stuff that I had, and she picked out a really cool uh 2001 from GMK Bandai uh King Ghidorah. So it's a you know pretty big piece, about 11 yeah. 12 inches long. And uh, and uh, I got my nice photo and got to chat with her for a little bit and cut in line for all those people that are paying the big bucks for the autographs, <laughs> and it was awesome. So I can now say, not only do we have amazing vendor or excuse me, amazing artists that have bought from Toku Toy Town you know, the Tom Whalens of the world and Bob Eggleton's. Now I can say I have a bona fide musical icon and rock and roll hall of famer. Gina shock is now a Toku toy town fan. You got to print that picture out and hang it in your toy. Room. I know. Jay, that, I know. Jay, that's cool. And, um, yeah. also I just want to say for anybody who, um, anybody who does live in the area and maybe doesn't go to these toy shows, I have been to a lot of conventions in my life. A lot. I've been to a lot of toy shows. Maybe the most of, of any human being ever. That's possible. It's yeah. possible. Um, I've seen a lot of toy booths and I know, you know, Jay, you're my friend. I'm not just talking this up. Jay has the best looking booth I've ever seen. It oh, is like you. everything's priced. It's all clear. It's set mm -hmm. up very nicely. It's not just thrown up. It is legitimately like I told Jay, I told you whenever you sent me the video, if I ever walked into a toy show and saw a booth like yours, I'm fucking done, dude. Like there's no <laughs> I have never seen a booth as good as your setup. And and, oh, thank and that's, you. that's true. Well, I think that means a lot. I do. Um, I do take pride. It takes a long time because, you know, I, I write a description of what everything is and a, a custom price tag and everything, a little uh, display, acrylic display. But you know what? The funny thing that you mentioned, though, Jake, is I, I have the same experience at the toy shows that I go to. And I know it's been, you know, far fewer than you. But I can't stand when things aren't priced. I can't stand when, you know, it's yeah. it, it's just listed either incorrectly or are in a very vague description. Like I want to be able to know, you know, what I'm buying, especially things that are expensive because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, and it's funny. Let's tie it back to this weekend when we were hanging out. We went to one store that won't be named, but we've just said it already on the show that some things are overpriced. Some things are yeah. underpriced and some things aren't priced at all. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's just like, it's a cluster. You, nothing, nobody knows anything, right? It's just like stuff on a shelf. And it's like, ugh. And then we go to another tr uh, store, uh, Second Chance Toys, I believe mm -hmm. it's the name. And and their price tags were great because, A, they were priced. But also, mm -hmm. especially a lot of toys that have accessories, you know, you might know that you need this figure. But you might not know every single accessory that comes with it. And it would say, hey, missing left laser yeah. beam, you know, missing, you know, gun holster and belt accessory, you know, complete hundred percent complete. And you, you trust them too. At a toy, at a toy store, that is like gold because yeah. it's like, you don't feel like you have to be on there, like on your phone, like trying to figure yeah. it out, like get the original instructions to find what piece am I missing? And I think going that extra mile really helps. And it, I don't know if it directly correlates to sales. I, I believe it does. But it makes me feel good as a vendor that I'm doing my best to give them all the information so they can make, you know, to some to some folks, these prices are, are pretty high for like, especially mm -hmm. for rare Safubi. Like, I want to make sure that they feel comfortable and confident what they bought is worth that two hundred dollars at three hundred dollars. So um, thank you for noticing. And um, I yeah. do I do. I'm excited to see because we're growing it for G Fest in July. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a whole nother like basically third booth, third table. So Ooh. I'm excited to see how that gets merchandised and uh, and how it looks. I'm hoping it tops this uh, this last shows even. And, and that was one of my best ones. Yeah, I, I also I agree that it um 
anytime do I go to I go to a toy show or a convention or whatever, if nothing's priced, I hate it because huh. I hate having to ask whoever's running the booth over yeah. and over. Well, how much yeah. is it? How much? Is it? I feel like it's annoying to them to get yeah. asked over and over. And it's annoying to me to have to ask. So how about just fucking fix that and yeah. put the prices out there? And the other thing for the vendor, it's inefficient because I'm now having to tell you what the price is as opposed to you being able to make, kind of at least make a decision. Hey, yeah. is this worth me trying to haggle or whatever? Because if, if I say it's $100 and your price limit was 50 you're not mm -hmm. going to ask me, guess what? I didn't waste any time. I'm, I can do something else. I can talk to a different customer and you're not wasting any time. Right. You can go on to the next thing. If, you know, if it says it's 65 and you, you're at 50, then maybe it's worth chatting with me, but it's just really, it helps become more efficient um, as a seller too. And when, you know, when you have a lot of people, when it's that rush and you have like 15 people at your booth asking you questions that helps out a lot. Um, and mm -hmm. so I, I think it's, it's good for the buyer but also it's really helpful for the seller too. If people just take a little extra time to do that, I think it'll make their experience better too. Mm -hmm. It's laziness, Jay. Um, it's laziness. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad you had a good, uh, good convention. It was, Thank you. it was good to Thank see you. Um, but we do have some news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Long winded way news. of saying I, I didn't miss much, but here's, okay. I did have a couple things I'm going to add. I, I didn't see, a, I didn't see a lot of stuff, you know, jumping around the internet. How about so. this one? You saw this one because we chatted about it. Yeah. There's old AG Kamanaga and there's him just crushing my bank account by saying <laughs> Godzilla 89. Yes, the same Morrison Godzilla 89 that I have 62 or so of with two more on the way. He announced they are creating a 450 of this. Now, this scares me. I am getting this one. I actually have it. It's been shipped out in Japan because thank you to one of our most important people to the Toku town, uh, back in side, the supply side, the, you know, supplier side that he's able to secure one for me. So I do have that coming and uh, I'm excited for, for that. However, though people will laugh and say, yeah, right, Jay, I do not think <laughs> I'll be collecting these because it is a sheer matter of, of space. And yeah. I love it. And, uh, and here's the thing, like, even if I sold all my 350s, which is what somebody that might may or may not be my co-host on YJS on Monster Island told me to do, <laughs> to restart uh, and uh, and uh, collect the 450s, dude, these things won't even fit on my shelves that I have in there, and I'm not changing yeah. out the shelves. That's a pain in the ass. So, uh, but it's huge news. The 89s finally getting the 450 treatment. It's gonna be cool. Do you think they're gonna slow down on the 350s or they have to? Right? Yeah. I think yeah. they probably noticed that like I haven't been buying as many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're doing it. Yeah, they're like, oh, he used to get like seven and, you know, put them on the sides. But no, no, now he's getting like one. Um, so I don't know. But I think that is a that's a really cool thing. I'm so glad they're doing it. And I'm excited to see, you know, I'm sure they'll do a few. But here, here's here's the thing. They started doing the Geikens in 450. Mm -hmm. And they started with the glow in the dark blank and then the two bull marks, the one that was a uh, uh, Bullmark inspired the colorway that was glow in the dark and then the regular one, those three. And I was like, okay, great. And they just released another five more translucent ones. So like, I don't know. I mean, maybe if the first couple 89 sell well, they'll do the whole, the whole thing. But um, I love their 450 line. It really helps them for their Jeffries chances next year. It really does. Yeah, that 450 sure. started off strong with all the Geigen. <laughs> so maybe this is a, uh, I mean, if the, if the 89 goes gangbusters, then you're going to have, two really good 450 sculpts and uh and um submissions so mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just, i'm a little nervous about it <laughs> yeah we'll see i'll be i'll be excited to see uh you know some better photos of this and yeah. you know see it compared to the 350 but it's exciting yeah. and I, I believe this is coming out at the uh i don't know the date but like the sicaluna arts festival um it'll be an exclusive to that so um yeah set your dates to TBD, I guess, or whenever that is. I'm sure that date is known. I just don't know it off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah, it's out there. We just don't uh, know it. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, here's one. I wanted to throw this one out there. So I, uh, I, there's two things that have been released recently that are really funky heteras. Um, and I had to put these out there because I think they're just worth talking about because they're so, um, I don't know, they're so just different and crazy. The first one is the Metacom and is it, is it Akashic? Akashic? 
Records. I don't know the uh, the pronunciation. Um, but anyway, yeah. it's their Shelter Bank Hetera, the anatomy design or anatomy diagram phase two. Um, and this is going to be a Tokyo Art Fair lottery exclusive coming in at a cool $1,600, 50 centimeters tall uh, with the green fur. And um, yeah, so that was the first one that came, or I guess technically the second one. The first one was our good buddies over at Swimmy Design Lab who do a lot of really fun, funky stuff. They're doing their season one hetera, as they call it. Uh, it's going to be a lottery exclusive to their site. A little bit smaller and a little bit more cost effective at about 200 bucks US. And I thought both of these were just so funky and weird. And you are the master, you know, I guess like judge when it comes to funky and weird <laughs> kaiju toys. I wanted to get your thoughts on these and which one would you pick up? Well, these are, I think these are both great. Um, I love both of these. I really, really love the, the green fur on the yeah. Metacom. Um, I almost though would prefer it if it was not like an anatomy version, if it was just yeah. a straight up green yeah. fur header, that would be really, really cool. Especially but 50 all... centimeters tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gigantic. Um, that price is outrageous though. Um, yeah. Also the, the swimmy one. I just love, I just love that. Like that's yeah. such a cool little, it looks like a can like a wax candle or something that's melting. Yeah. These are both great, man. I, you know what? Like I'm pretty sure I've said it before you know, on the show, but like I have zero header of figures. I have zero, like I might have a Bandai. Uh, you yeah. know what? I got like a Bandai final wars, uh right. hetera and then i have like a regular band but nothing like yeah nothing cool. i have one i have one sofa b head nope i have two i have my big and 450 I've, i forgot i have a, i have one like pink translucent one yeah and i've i've seen a few out there that i would like to get you know but it's just mm. not it's not ever one of my my tops but like yeah if i if i was if i was like at a convention or something and somebody had this swimmy i'd buy that i'd i, I would pay i would pay that price and buy that for me too sure. I'm the same way. I like it. I don't love the anatomy ones and I don't love them. They're fine. They're fine. I would definitely, I like the ones that are like all clear and you can see in it the guts as opposed to yeah. ones that are kind of like the diagram style. Yeah. But at 50 centimeters, like I'm trying to imagine like somebody walking into a room and already saying like, oh, wow, you have a lot of toys. You're kind of one of those toy collector people. And they turn around and there's this like 25 inch tall <laughs> green for hetero with the you know spleen and intestines there sticking out They're like oh i need to leave um so i uh, the, the other one just looks funky and cool and i and i love that one i would love that if that was 50 centimeters tall too um yeah. they do good stuff i love swimmy design they do really cool cool things but i thought this was a fun one and um i have a little head-to-head -head battle of heteros because yeah they're both they're both cool and because we're going to be talking about creature designs a little bit later we are uh, on the main event uh but and then the last thing once again not huge i think across the whole landscape of kaiju but one that you must address because it's speaking directly to you and i know you did talk a little bit about this on toy anxiety on tuesday or excuse me extreme toy anxiety for your patrons of oh, toy okay. anxiety. I, know, I know where we're going i know where there we're going. Is cyclops From, uh, yes the two horn the one that gets beat up by the dragon at the yeah. end uh doesn't get his eye poked out but does get be uh, killed by the dragon the two-horned uh cyclops from seventh voyage of sinbad number two now look star ace x plus all their harry and stuff is pretty awesome i don't think like it's great but i have to ask is this something that you are going to add to the growing the uh harry housing collection Maybe I, I, I've had to kind of slow down on a little bit. You know, I got mm. three Harryhausen figures. I got a fourth on the way. Uh, okay. And I still like, I still really want that Medusa. I didn't pick up the Medusa <sighs> when it was out. I, I, there's a couple others that I'm, I'm kind of eyeing. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I love the Cyclops, but I'm not yeah. sure it would be my next pick if I was looking at the, the landscape of what's out there. But this is awesome. Both of the Cyclopses that they've released are great. I yeah. love that. And, and and there's something about the Cyclops mm. that is so very, almost more than the Kraken. It's like mm. the Cyclops is like a poster boy Harryhausen figure. Yep. The jaw and everything. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love and it. I, I love the the base. It has the entrance to the dragon's cave in there as the yeah. extra for the deluxe. And then like he has the rolling eye articulated jaw, like very, mm-hmm. very cool. And um, I, of all the Harry Hosen stuff that's been released, the one that I think I've come the closest of, of jumping in on, because I think it might be my favorite Harry Hosen design or one of is, I mean, it's hard because the red is obviously up there too, but is, is this the one horn Cyclops? Yeah, I love one that horn. one. I think, I think that one is just like, to your point, like if you say Ray Harryhausen, what's the first thing that pops into your head? And to me, it might be the Cyclops. Um, yeah. And so, uh, and so, yeah. So I've been I've been looking at that one. This one, uh, now that this is out as well, I don't know. I mean, you give me a dragon, and then uh, we might have to might have uh, to get that, that now. Feedback. If they do the if they did the dragon next, oh. that would first of all it would be insane because it would be pretty. Yeah, it's gonna large. be like five hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, but having the dragon and this, that's a, that's a show stopping piece. Yeah. yeah. All this it, stuff's it, great, man. Star Ace kills it every time. Star Ace X plus the stuff is, I I've never had any bad thing to say about those figures. They're awesome. Yeah. They, and they do wonderful stuff and Harryhausen's awesome. And yeah, but I figured, uh, that, I don't know if that's one of these is going to push me over the edge and I just go full in. So I, I just I'm surprised you have. not I'm like, what, yeah. what are you waiting on? They've, they've put out it's space. It's dude, really just the, space. It's really just I, space. That's all it is. I honestly, dude, I honestly want to move my, so you can't see them, but I have mine up on this shelf right here. Mm-hmm. And then there's, the, there's the Kraken, Ymir, Retosaurus. And I really kind of want to get them into the living room. I want those to be like, I feel like those need to be the things where people walk in their house, your house and that's kind of their first glimpse of what kind of yeah. weirdo you are is they're like, Oh, what is that? You know, <laughs> uh, I want to get them maybe up on top of some bookshelves or something. Yeah. But, um, also they're huge and <laughs> yeah, they're <big. laughs> they take up too much space, uh, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the problem with are the, the challenge, not a problem. I'm not saying problem. That is the wrong word. The challenge for me is, my monster room was built uh, originally and, and now it's an office because work from home and all that good stuff, mm-hmm. but it was built as kind of a media room. And so like one wall is like the drop down screen. Now I've been able to, uh, to do where I can put, still put stuff on that wall, but like I have to be kind of picky and choosy because it can't stick out too far. Right. So I have like some right, vintage movie posters. Right. I do have like, basically I can get probably the width of a detolf talk uh, top on there, but like, if I add more, then that's more vintage movie posters that are, are going to be put in the attic and I already have a few yeah. in there. So it's just, it's just tough. Um, I mean, I could stop collecting Godzilla. I could, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could do that. That's what you can do. <laughs> and when we start our Harry Housen podcast, but that's it. I mean, that's all the news we got, man. Um, but yeah. one of these days I'll probably go, you know, in, the, in a very dark place when it comes to Harry Housen. <laughs> I, I think you should. Um, yeah. It just, it feels good.